Hi, welcome back. On this episode, we're going to install a new sending unit in our gas tank. Our old one is no longer working, so our gauge is reading empty all the time and our gas light flashes all the time. So don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button and check me out on Instagram at Clara Garage. Right now we're around 300 subscribers. I'm hoping by the end of the summer to be up to 500 or more subscribers. Okay, right, so before we take the uh, gauges and everything off, so this light right here for the fuel, it uh, flashes and my fuel gauge is reading uh, empty because the sending unit isn't uh, making anymore. It's acting up. So that's what the uh, bike does. So while I'm riding all the time, this light's coming on and off, just flashing the way it's flashing right now. And uh, the gas gauge is always reading empty. Once in a blue moon, it quits flashing, the gas gauge comes up a little bit. So that's just the contacts are finally making. But that's what uh, my bike is doing. So I'm going to change the sending unit and that will cure that uh, issue. So this is our uh, sending unit. This is the new one. And uh, it sits in the tank upside down with the float facing forward. So as we uh, fuel up, it lifts up. And as we fuel down, it goes down. It's just a uh, resistive pot right here, basically, except a linear one instead of like a rheostat. So it just changes the resistance all the way up, all the way down. The, the new one comes with a new uh, gasket as well, which is good. So you're going to want to change that gasket just to be safe. So the reason these things fail, with the, the bike vibrates so much and you get a lot of mileage on them, eventually it starts to make and not make on the contacts. And that ends up being their failure point. You could try to go in and try to bend stuff and everything, but for the price of one and for the uh, hassle, it's probably easier just to uh, put a new one on and then you should be good for a long time again. So that's what I'm doing. This is actually the second one I've, I'm going to be installing on this bike now. So the first one failed, I think, around uh, 60 or 70,000 kilometers. I'm up to uh, 173,000 kilometers now. And it's uh, failed again, so I'm going to change it. I still do a lot of traveling on this bike, and I like having a working fuel gauge. It just gives a little extra peace of mind, but I, this bike does have a mechanical reserve, which is nice. So we're going to be changing this. I already got the uh, tank and everything off. If you need to see how to remove the tank, episode 24, I show how to remove it. And then episode 31, I show how to uh, put it back on, if you have any issues there. And then episode 32, I show how to set the clock. So you can have your clock working again if you forget how to do that. That will get you to the stage that I'm at now. And this uh, new sending unit, the uh, part number is 5VN-857529. So normally when I take the tank off, I normally uh, put it on a nice soft material chair upside down with a blanket so it doesn't get any scratches or anything. And then uh, I'll do whatever I need to do. Even if I'm just taking the, bike off, the tank off just in general, I'll uh, set it on there. But I have these uh, underglow lights on here and I'd have to uh, follow back the wires and undo the connections. I have everything taped up really good. So I'm vertically standing it like this. I put a uh, shirt over top of the battery post. I won't run any risk of shorting it out and uh, having arcs and sparks or with this being a gas tank, possibly a fire, that'd be incredibly bad and dangerous. So we don't want that. So that's what I'm doing to prevent that. But and I have a bungee cord, so it shouldn't be able to fall, but I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. I would put it flat in a, uh, in a nice soft chair or something just to be safe but this is how I'm going to do it. So this connector right here, this green one that goes up underneath the tank, that's going to be the uh, connector for our ascending unit that sends our level to the uh, fuel gauge. So we're going to unplug that. You just squeeze down on there and then you pull. I'm going to use two hands. So you just squeeze down and then you pull it and that opens up that connector. So, oh, and then here's our connector, it's right at the base of the tank. And then, 
Our next step is getting these two bolts out. So I can have these underglow lights in here. They're starting to get a little bit rough, but they still work. Oh, there they are there. So I'm gonna pull these two bolts out and then the old sending unit will pull right out. And just uh, always when you pull it out, make sure you pay attention to which way that floats pointing so you can get make sure you get the new one in properly. And these are just a 10 millimeter uh, bolt. I'm just gonna use my wrench. So I'll just wrench it out. Uh, if I didn't have these underglow lights on here, I would probably end up uh, just using a ratchet to be a little bit easier. But I'm trying not to completely rip them off, even though they're, this one's starting to get a little beat up. There's one bolt. And now we'll get the other bolt out. And you want to do this when your tank's empty or almost empty, so you don't get gas all over the place. And there's the other bolt out. And now we should be able to carefully pull the center unit right out. There it is. And then you gotta kinda give it a turn so the float can fit out, like so. And as we can tell, it would have been sitting in there like this, so that float goes towards the uh, front of the tank. And then we can see how loose and sloppy that is there. That's why this quit working. They just get wore out and they get uh, super loose and sloppy. Oh. You can probably tighten that up and uh, get some more life out of it. But I'm going to just change it. You can see there's some uh, discoloration on here too, like it's been uh, arcing and tracking a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and change it. But that's what happens, it starts to vibrate and move and then it doesn't make on the contacts anymore and then you won't get any more readings. Now you want to make sure that your area is clean before you put the new one on. And as you can see with the new one, it's uh, there's no play at all in there. But you can potentially try to compress this part here, but I'm just going to change it. So it's going to be uh, exact, exact opposite as uh, when we put it in. So we're going to slip the fluid in and then turn it and then we're going to get this part in and we're going to make sure that the float's facing forward. So we're going to go in just like so. There's the fluid in, it's facing forward. Now there's the part with the resistors and everything going in. We're keeping that float facing forward. Our gasket, gasket's already on there. We just want to make sure that that gasket is seated nice. And then we're going to grab one of our bolts and uh, put our bolts back in. I'm actually going to put a little bit of never seize on here, even though they came out real easy. We got a little bit of never seize on. Now we should be able to tuck this in. And there's one bolt started. And we'll put a little bit of never seize on the other bolt. And then we'll uh, put that in as well. And then we can tighten it up. This is a. Uh, Pretty quick, easy job. The, the hardest part is taking the uh, tank and the gauges off. This is just uh, one wire connector and uh, two bolts, and it should just go right back in, so it's, uh, it's not too bad. And another way to make sure you know that your uh, float's facing forward, the wire should be directed towards the inside of the tank or towards where the frame would be. You can see the wires coming out here with our connector. And then when you do get this back on and the tank back on the bike, you want to uh, double check for leaks because you don't want any gas leaking out, especially over top of a hot motor. Now that you have the heat, you might have sparks. It's a uh, bad situation if you have a gas leak. Now we just gotta snug these up. And we want to uh, tighten these up fairly equally. We don't want to crank one all the way down and then crank the other one down. We want to make sure that we uh, pull it in nice and flat 
so we don't cause any uh, leaks or anything. And you also don't want to over tighten and stop a bolt because then you're into a really bad situation. So I'm going to call that good right there. As you can see, I'm not putting that much effort into it because I definitely don't want to snap one of these. And you can see that there's a little uh, catcher right here that this is supposed to go underneath. So that should be like that. And then this should be under there with it. Just like so. And remember for putting the tank back on, episode 31 shows you how to do it. I'm going to put some dielectric grease on the connector too, just to uh, help with any corrosion or anything. So I usually just put a goop on like that and then plug it in and it's usually good enough. And that's the shirt that I had down protecting the uh, battery terminals from the tank shorting out on it. Alright, so we got the uh, tank all secured on. We got the uh, gauge cluster on, so now we'll turn the key on. And as we can see, the uh, fuel light's not flashing anymore. And the uh, gas gauge even had uh, moved up just a hair. We'll see when we shut the gauge off. You'll see that it uh, drops and settles just a bit. So our gauge should be work in working order again. I'm on fumes right now, so when I gas it up, the gauge should rise up and we should be good to go. So it's a pretty straightforward, easy job. Hardest part really is getting the uh, gauges in the tank off and back on. And then once you get to that stage, it's just uh, two bolts for that sending unit and one wire plug-in, and then you're good to go. So we'll watch this gas gauge, and we'll see this time that it settles a bit. So that's perfect. I was looking at my little logbook that I keep track of all my maintenance and everything in. And the, uh, the last time that I changed that sending unit, I was at uh, 72,511 kilometers, and I'm around, uh, 73, 000, I'm around 173,000 kilometers now, and uh, I have around uh, 8,000 to 10,000 kilometers where it wasn't working, because it had uh, quit working when I was leaving for my big trip last year. And I had put 7,500 kilometers on then, and then uh, I was just busy, so I never ordered one, and I put a couple of extra thousand kilometers after that. So it, it really failed around uh, 162,000 kilometers, even though I'm changing it today around 173,000 kilometers. So I put about uh, 90,000 kilometers on the one that I just removed before it failed. So that's uh, about... Uh, 15 to 20,000 kilometers more than what I got on the original one that came with the bike. And uh, when I changed it originally, the first time I changed it was uh, May 6th, 2016. And uh, I paid uh, about $102. And uh, this time when I changed it, it's uh, May 18th, 2023. So a few years have gone by. And uh, this time it's uh, $148, so you might as well call it like $150. So it's gone up about uh, $45 in price. Yeah, so it's been about seven years since I changed it the last time. So, so it's a little expensive. I like having a working fuel gauge because I do a lot of traveling with this bike still. It's my uh, favorite bike to ride. So it's, to me it's worth the... Uh, $150 of reliable fuel gauge, so I know when I'm traveling, I can look at the gauge and I can trust the readings I'm getting. I'm not questioning whether the gauge is right or not. I'm driving just off a of mileage. I can trust what the gauge is showing. If it's showing that I'm doing really good on fuel, I most likely am doing really good on fuel, but I do typically carry a one gallon gas can just in case 
And it's nice to have a little bit of security blanket when you're really far away from home. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing helps me out big time and uh, helps encourage me to make more videos. Click that notification button and uh, check me out on Instagram at Clara Garage. Have a great night.